Hey everyone, it's Julie and welcome to Peekaboo Rose's Log, where I ramble about whatever I want to ramble about. This is only my second log, but the whole idea is that I come on and I just share what I want to share and not over plan or overthink, just be more laissez-faire about it, more casual, and go with it. So what do I want to start off with? Well, I mean, it's officially spooky season, so that makes me really happy. Halloween is like my favorite holiday, and so that really cheers me up. Uh, September, it, September has been emotionally, you know, mentally taxing for me. Uh, I think this whole year has its very dramatic ups and downs more downs than ups, which sucks. And so 2021 has turned out to be worse than 2020 for me. And so um, just, you know, the whole Halloween vibe, spoopy vibe, like that, that's been lightening my mood. And uh, yeah, I just, I just need 2021 to be over. I've actually started planning what I am, I guess for now calling like a reset 2022, because I started off 2021, you know, with these goals in mind, certain guidelines and intentions. And, you know, my, my word of the year was quality and quality has not been what I would call an accurate description of how this year has been in a lot of ways um, or what I've achieved. And so it's not like, I wouldn't say it's been a failure, um, but my intentions definitely were, they came to a halt, you know, with all uh, some of the personal drama. And uh, so I feel like 2022 is just a reset for me. Like, okay, let's, let's try this again. So I have already, even though it's October, I have already started like planning for this. Um, some might call it depth here. I, I don't really, uh, I don't see it as a depth here necessarily, maybe some aspects of it, but, and for those of you who don't know what a depth here, a depth here is, just uh, look up look up tarot depth here on YouTube, and you'll I'm sure you'll get a bunch of videos talking about what a depth here is, especially in terms of like this tarot witchy community, how we've been um, structuring our depth years, and um, so so yeah, I, I am not really calling this a depth year, more like a reset, reset 2022. And so, yeah, I've been planning that uh, in my journal. Um, let me know if you want to hear more about that, and I'd be happy to do a video dedicated on that. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of been on my mind. Just wanting, wanting 2021 to be over. <laughs> so let's move on to something maybe a little more light and cheerful. Let's talk about, let's talk about Squid Game. That might not have been the best transition given that Squid Game is neither light nor cheerful, but it's been on my mind because I binge watched it and loved it, loved it. Now it is intense. This is on Netflix. It's a K-drama. I think it's like eight or nine episodes. And uh, if you like the type of storyline where there are kind of high stakes uh, competition, high stakes games amongst people, and you don't mind some violence, this would this would be a great show for you. <laughs> was, it's intense, but it's so well written it's so well produced and well crafted and um yeah I, I i just got completely sucked into it 
So I highly recommend that show. Another show that I have been continuing with is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I am now about maybe like three or four episodes away from finishing season two. I've really been enjoying that. It's been a lot of fun. Let's talk about some decks and such because that's probably a, a huge part of why you're here, right? So um, I have begun for the month of October doing Tom Benjamin's um, Halloween icon tarot suit. Tar tarot suit. Suit? Suit. Me can words good. So, um, <laughs> oh my God. That's been a lot of fun. I, I think I did this last year too and um, had a good time with it. So I've been doing that this year and the deck that I've been using for this monthly challenge is the Raven's Prophecy Tarot because it is very appropriate vibe wise, aesthetic wise. I love me this deck and um felt that it was time to bring this out again. Although this is one I, you know, work with kind of throughout the year on and off. I would say most of my kind of spooky Halloween vibe decks are ones that I use throughout the year. And it is based on the Maggie Stiefvater series, the Raven Cycle series. And um, uh, it's just, it's both series and this deck are good. Um, I, you know, I had some thoughts about maybe, and I don't know if I'm in over my head, but maybe doing a series where I talk about the book, the books in relation to the deck. I don't know how interested people would be in that because I feel like this is an underrated deck and not, I don't see a whole, whole lot about this deck. Uh, and I think part of it is that people feel that maybe they need to have read the Raven Cycle series in order to understand the deck. And while I don't believe that's true, and it's just my opinion, I, I do feel like you could still read this deck and get a lot out of this deck without having read the series. I wonder if, well, certainly when I read the books and then worked with this deck, it did, um, it did provide more insight uh, for me. And so in that way, it was helpful and it did endear me more to the deck because I was seeing references to the books, intended or not, um, there were references that I felt that I was making connections with, with the books. And so I don't know, I'm babbling, but I don't know if that would be of interest to anybody or helpful to anybody, but it was something that I thought about. I don't know. So the Guild Tarot is uh, one that I've been using for my morning daily pools. And I haven't um delved too deeply with this deck there is a longer more comprehensive guidebook that i did download off kindle um and i have dipped into that here and there but for the most part i have been just easing myself into the deck and working with it through this little white book which is legit it's a decent white book from what i gather um, this this pulls out just enough of what you need from the larger guidebook to be able to use this deck, um, and so I've just been I've just been working with with the um, LWB and kind of letting the deck guide me in terms of how it wants to be read. And right now, that is with using the keywords. Um, because at first I thought, well, maybe I could, is this something where I'm going to have to just ignore the keywords? Um, like how, how am I going to, how am I going to use this deck? Uh, but the keywords I feel are there for a reason. And so I, 
haven't been fighting that. That's how I have been working with this deck so far. And uh, who knows, I might change my mind. I might change my strategy and or the way I use the deck um, as I go along. But so far, so good. Another deck that I've pulled out for this season is Tarot of Passing Showers by our very own Valerie Chia of the Slightly Chipped Moon. And you can find this deck on Make Playing Cards. I will try to remember to leave a link. Um, but yeah, this is uh, manga inspired and kind of it has this um, horror aspect to it or kind of macabre aspect to it. And so I feel mood wise, this lends really well to kind of this Halloween spooky season. Um, so it's been some months since I last worked with this. So I thought this would be the perfect time to pull it out. Now this is a mixture of, you know, different structures. I believe a lot of it is Thoth based, but that hasn't been a problem for me. Next up we have the Antique Anatomy Tarot. Now I did work with this, I want to say in, in the summer times, uh, July maybe, when I was doing a tarot challenge and I used this deck for like one half of that tarot challenge. And I thought, well, it's, it's a great time to get this one out again as well because skeletons, elixirs, you know. Uh, and Kim from Abundant Life Tarot, she has begun a study group on this deck where she has a series of YouTube videos and then in her private Facebook group, I know that there's a thread with this deck. So I will try to leave uh, information to that as well if you are interested in that, but that seems really cool and I plan to check it out. But this is, as you can see, more of a, like a, a pippish deck. And again, like the Guild Tarot, I am, you know, pips usually I kind of read more numerologically and less like RWS. But um, in the guidebook, the pips do pretty much follow the RWS meanings. And so um, that's just how I've been using this deck. Now, the great thing about this deck is that because it's pips, um, if I were to kind of switch up the way I read to be a little more kind of numerologically neutral, I can do that, not a problem. For those of you who are interested in pips, you know, that's kind of a way to transition from the illustrated miners of the RWS into working with pips, you know, you can still use those same meanings um, and then practice with this more kind of pipish imagery. So just really quickly, the last two decks that I'm going to share, the one being the beautiful Korea Tarot. And I have been using this since part of September. I think the days run together, but in any case, uh, this has been just a, a kind of like a comfort deck to me, actually. And actually, there is, um, so coming up next Thursday, there is um, a live that I will be participating, participating in. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, on Rochelle's channel, Amethyst Ascension, where we'll be doing something fun. And in prepar preparation, I can words. In preparation for, for that live, I will be using this deck. And then finally, the Hanson Roberts. Um, I can't seem to quit this deck lately. I don't know why. <laughs> 
I don't know why, but I love it. I think this is a deck where the relationship has has been a, a slow burn from like the beginning of the year when I first worked with it. And then um, I let it go. And then it's come back to me and I realized that I missed it. And so a rekindling, I guess. I think that's it for me. I do want to again repeat that um, I will be on Rochelle's channel, Amethyst Ascension, with some other awesome guests. And that will be on Thursday, October 16th, October 14th. Thursday, October 14th, 5 p.m. Eastern time. And then Saturday, October 16th, 1 p.m. Eastern time, Heather Carter, Sarah from Sunset Baltero, and I will be on my channel for our next episode of Three Girls, One Deck, TGOD. So be on the lookout for that. I will set up a reminder at some point soon. And then I think that's it. In November, I will be joining Jilly on um, her channel, Little Zen Crone, for Wine and Tarot which is hilarious because I'm allergic to wine, but hey, I can still hang. So, And so I'll remind you of that as we get closer to that time, but I'm looking forward to that as well. So yeah, some things in the works, but um, until then, I hope you all are doing well. And until the next video, much love and take care.